Good morning, folks. We're starting today with a great article and paper out of UT Arlington. Folks, yesterday you got a glimpse into our Star Water series, which examines stellar water production and abundance around many types of stars and exoplanets, but we've not yet had a chance to examine F-type stars. They are much bigger than our sun and red dwarfs, and this group thinks that they've been left out. I agree. Tungurahua Volcano erupting overnight. This is only a few hundred miles from that Chile earthquake location and on the same fault system and volcano chain. Something noteworthy if you remember the tropical cell earthquake correlation. That 6.2 in the Solomon Islands occurred right on the tropical storm track there. As noted, we have three storms in a line here, each part of the Uyen candidate two or three tropical track. Northern storm heading straight for the Philippines. The central storm is tracking right for northern Australia. The southern system is getting no love from the experts even as she heads for New Zealand. We also have a storm developing in the Indian Ocean. Quickly at Europe, let's pull the pressure overlay so you can note the thunderstorm potential in the Mediterranean and the northern islands concern as the purple low crests over. The wind map shows high pressure pushing out in the central states, so we look to the coastlines. It's a half-court press as the weather is watching the waves hit both sides of the land. We've had no big flaring, but what we saw to open was a longer duration C8 flare that released significant ejecta north. None of this will be geo-effective, but it did ramp the Uyen system prediction index and we're watching more storms form and intensify. Looking to the sunspots, the departing group has gained impressive complexity but is no longer facing Earth and is a polar proton alert at best. The incoming groups look less mature, still mostly separated magnetics except for that trailing mix at the northern groups. A point. Both NASA and NOAA messed up that CME tracking. They expected a combination of the M6 blast with an earlier filament eruption, but had them arriving together two days after the M6, meaning it would have been a majorly fast CME off something that wasn't even an X-flare. <laughs> Meanwhile, we said that there was almost no way this thing would arrive before April 5th. Well, the time came and went for those illogical expert predictions, thankfully, because that speed may have jacked a satellite or two. As it is, we're taking the initial bits of the impact seven or eight hours into the new day UTC. We're all calm for now, but that could shift based on the power of today's impact and the wake. Red negative coronal opening blocked by fields down south, but positive green slice of a hole slides in. The south is terribly powerful, and even the unblocked positive opening has a strong force associated. You can see both coronal holes encroaching from the left darkly. They'll face Earth as Mars enters geocentric opposition to the sun, and we could have another big quake. Watch is at moderate levels today, with a ramp expected in the coming days. Folks, there are just a few days left for the Mobile Observatory Project. My family took the first vulnerability and got the RV. You guys stepped up and crushed the Kickstarter campaign to turn it into the Mobile Observatory and Science Lab. Campaign ends Tuesday. Donators get their name on the RV. If you already got a name slot, pay attention Tuesday or Wednesday for the survey email asking you exactly what name to put on the RV. Business name, website without the www, your kid, your grandma. You can put almost anything on there within reason. Watch for the survey email in a couple of days. Current conditions and shots of our star to close. Eyes open. No fear at 6.30 a.m. Eastern Time and that's the news. Be safe everyone.